I was just going to stop for a few minutes and just kind of glance around and remember it the way it was. Like many people last year, Don was looking for just a little treasure in the rubble. This house belonged to his son, Matthew. He was searching for a Lionel train set he gave him. What struck me driving through Coffee Park near Santa Rosa is how many of us in Northern California live in communities just like this. It's a reminder of our growing danger in this warmer, drier climate as we start to blur the lines between urban and wild land areas. I met up with the director of CAL FIRE, Ken Pimlot, in Cameron Park, a community that sits on the border between city and rural living. Uh, we're right here at the urban interface, and these are the traditional kinds of fires that we see in California where homes and buildings are coming into the wildland. You get further down towards Folsom, that's very much like Coffee Park. Yet building continues as California's population grows, meaning fire danger is becoming a way of life in the Golden State. We have a wet year, it's a high fire danger. We have drought, it's a high fire danger. We have normal rain, it's a high fire danger. What's up? When is it not a high fire danger? <laughs> California has high fire danger every year. That's the kind of, it's the climate, climatic conditions that we're in, it's the vegetation type. All of the above create fire season conditions uh, every year. Some years may be uh, more intense than others based on uh, p weather patterns and vegetation, the vegetative conditions. But the potential is always in California for significant fire conditions. And it's not a predominantly Southern California problem. Watch how the wildfire danger moves northward in the next 50 to 70 years from a projection tool by CalAdapt, a website dedicated to our changing weather and climate in California. Ken says this is especially alarming to see this northward progression due to the potential for a more dangerous fire behavior. Northern California has the topography is more complex, a lot more drainage uh, 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 oriented in different directions. The wind has opportunities to blow in different directions and be influenced by different directions of drainages. You've got building going on across, you know, larger areas uh, within the wildland. You know, it's in Northern California is just now really developing in these areas where Southern California obviously has been developed longer. In a strong north wind event, the wind will get funneled through these canyons. It gets compressed, speeds up, and becomes superheated. If the area at the exit region has buildings and homes, they will trap the wind, creating these small vortices, which will quickly spread this fire. All these structures become targets for a fast moving firestorm. These types of unique weather events are why Mike Smith has been on over 70 fires as their incident meteorologist. Almost every fire I've ever been at, there's some weird weather phenomenon that occurs that I've never seen anywhere else. He works out of the Sacramento National Weather Service office and has seen a growing need for integrated weather forecasting with fire management. When I went out uh, 25 years ago, my trainer said, your average deployment will be about five days. And now a week minimum and usually two weeks. We're just spending more time out on the fires as meteorologists because it's felt that the, our need for us being out there is longer than it used to be. He also took me through the unfolding weather pattern leading up to those devastating North Bay fires. A strong north wind event would get a fire going pretty good across these browned out hills, but that north wind would have to develop both at the surface and upper levels. So here's what this would look like. To our east, we'd have a surface high over the Great Basin. And then to our west, just off the coast of San Francisco, a surface low. In addition, an upper level ridge to support those strong north winds. But as he reminded me, even with this weather pattern, there isn't a fire without an ignition. And that's the reason the Weather Service puts out red flag warnings to alert of a high fire danger. If a fire were to start, it could very quickly spread. That's really what the definition of a red flag warning is, is those weather conditions are conducive to quick fire spread. It's not to say that there are going to be fires that start, it just is letting folks know that this is a dangerous situation if one should start. That's Michelle Mead, the warning coordination meteorologist at the Sacramento National Weather Service. I wanted to sit down with her to talk about how we could all work together better to keep people safe. She says they are working on even more ways to increase their messaging. And we're finding more and more that we need to be increasing our communication, whether that be through social media, through the media you, as you, um, or even live Periscope feeds, just to get people's attention. But this all comes before a potential disaster. In the end, seconds matter. She gave me some key action items. One, have a plan. Two, sign up for your county's wireless emergency alerts. 
Three, keep your phone by the bed. Four, no cell phone, keep your television or radio on for EAS alerts. And five, if you have a NOAA weather radio, make sure you are in the line of sight for operation. Given all this, it now comes down to better preparedness, better understanding, and better warning. When conditions line up, you have a devastating conflagration, you have a disaster, and that's what happened, and it's the reality now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe right there. And in the comments below, let me know what topics you'd like to see covered.